My father is a famous Tibetan master known by a lot of people. He had to escape from Tibet, so he feels this responsibility. It's like a mission. He knows that the Tibetan culture has a great value. The problem is that I don't know this, or maybe I didn't know this, and I didn't care about this 20 years ago. And welcome to The Kiosk Presents. My name is Steve, and today we're going to be interviewing Jennifer Fox and Rinpoche. They are, uh, Jennifer is a filmmaker, and Rinpoche is one of the uh, subjects of the documentary, My Reincarnation. Uh, it's a film that explores the universal struggles between father and son. Uh, Rinpoche is the father and uh, Tibetan master. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yes, Rinpoche is a Tibetan master who came to the West and began teaching after 1959 when the Chinese invaded Tibet. So. Uh, he came to the West, and I actually met him in 1985 when he was teaching in America and became his student, and later began to film him and his son, and uh, filmed them for 20 years to make my reincarnation. How old was his son when you first met him? Uh, Yeshe was 18 years old, and I think Rinpoche was probably 48, something like that. So this is a long work of your life. Huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> Were you making other projects at the same time? Or? I have, absolutely. I've made several films during this film. But then I would leave and come back and film several months or even years sometimes with Rinpoche and Yeshe and then go back and do another project. That's really interesting. It, uh, you're with Point of View. Yeah, the film will be airing on PBS's uh, Point of View POV on Thursday, uh, June 21st at 10 p.m. and then it's actually streaming live all summer PBS. starting. Uh, yes, and it's streaming live on June 22nd all summer. Yeah, right up to the 20th of September. Yes. That, that, that means there's no excuse for people uh, to miss this. And they shouldn't miss it, absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, so can you tell me a bit about Yeshi? Uh, what makes him and his father conflict during this time, uh, what issues do they have to work through? Sure. Well, this is all my point of view, so I'll just, you know, Rinpoche came from Tibet in a culture that was being destroyed by the Chinese, and when he came here, he had enormous pressure to save his spiritual culture, and that sort of motivated his whole life. So um, while Rinpoche was trying to save and actually teach in the West, Yeshe was growing up just really wanted to be a normal kid. And Yeshe was recognized as a very important reincarnation, actually Rinpoche's uncle, who was killed by the Chinese in prison. And he didn't want to be a reincarnation, and he didn't want to be a teacher like his father. He just wanted to be a normal kid and play in a rock band when I first met him and do normal things. So that was the conflict. It's actually a classic father-son co conflict. I think we can all relate to it. Uh, one thing that people in the West aren't going to be as familiar with, the idea of reincarnation, uh, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily that everyone always reincarnates, it's that key figures do. No, actually it's the opposite. In, in Tibetan Buddhism, everybody is considered to be a reincarnation. In fact, we reincarnate over and over again until we reach enlightenment. Um, a teacher chooses to reincarnate to actually help people and to pass on the teachings. That is interesting. All right, so. Did I say they that could, right? Will they, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, they could have 
uh, reached enlightenment. They stay behind to share the teaching. Exactly. But you are a reincarnation, and so is everybody else. And that is interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, so was this, did this get in the way of their lives at all, the filming? Did they, uh, how'd you guys stay out of the way of their lives <laughs> so that you could actually see it all? Well, let me ask Rinpoche. Rinpoche, did my filming you get in your way at all? Way. Did it bother you at all? Did it change your life at all? Change your life. Yeah, when I was filming you all no, those no, years. No, not change anything. <laughs> yeah. How it is, normal. Yeah. It was just me with the camera, so it wasn't a big crew. And I was already Rinpoche's student, so it was quite normal for me to be around. So you pretty much just made it into the background just every so often you had a camera. Yes, exactly, or always had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, Yeshi, I hear that he's now teaching. Yes, I mean, the evolution in the film is that he goes through, as he gets older, he becomes a businessman, has a family, and eventually begins to go through a spiritual awakening in which he remembers his past life, and it leads to a very dramatic change in his life. So he has the moment of awakening when he realizes what he wants to do. And yeah, and he ends up actually going back to Tibet and being enthroned in the monastery of his, re of his incarnation. So something people should see, it's quite an amazing scene. So did you actually go back to Tibet to film that? I didn't, as documentary life would have it. Uh, Yeshe didn't tell me he was going back. He told his father, but not me. So actually, it's his brother-in-law, Luigi, who filmed all the scenes in Tibet. And luckily, it was beautifully filmed. It's really exciting. I'm, I'm sure it is. Uh, for those who don't know, China, took, uh, China claimed Tibet a while back, and so a lot of their teachings are being lost, except for the people who are going out and making it their life's work to keep teaching it. Yes. So it, it's very cool to see a big portion of uh, not only the uh, teachings coming out, but also what it's like living as the new generation of Tibetan uh, in places other than Tibet. Yes. Uh, this mostly took place uh, for a while in uh, Italy. Uh, no, the film is filmed all over the world because Rinpoche actually travels and teaches all over the world. Um, in fact, I wanted to mention that he's going to New York to teach June 29th to July 1st, and he'll be in New York City if people would like to meet him. And you can find out more about that on our website, myreincarnationfilm.com, under you know, seeing Rinpoche's 2012 tour of America. That's actually interesting. I'll be in New York City. I, I will totally check you guys out. Well, you have to come and introduce yourself and say, Stephen, this is Stephen. I interviewed you. I most certainly will. Great. Uh, <laughs> for anyone who didn't catch it, pbs.org forward slash POV from June 22nd to September 20th. Uh, my reincarnation will be on there. Just watch it. Check it out. Uh, also, it's going to be airing for the first time on Thursday, June 21st at 10 p.m. on PBS. Don't miss this fantastic film. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Rinpoche, Thank for you. coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't wait to see it all. <laughs> Thanks. My son, when he was in his mother's womb, I had dreams, some dreams of my uncle, James Rinpoche, who was one of my teachers. I went to visit him with my wife. My uncle gave a kind of empowerment. In that moment, there is a red light. This light is dissolving in my wife. Then 
a very important Tibetan Lama in India, the head of uh, Satyava school. He wrote me a letter, and uh, he is saying, my, my son is a reincarnation of my uncle.